If you're watching this video right now, then there is a fair chance that the HT0 goggle is the best FPV goggle you could pick today. And what I want to say is that what makes it so great is its versatility. It can be used with three of the four FPV systems in use today, and it is versatile, and that does make it good, but that's not the only thing that makes it good. See, if it was mediocre at each of the things, but could do them all, you might go, eh, I feel conflicted as to whether you actually want to commit to it or whether you want to get one goggle that does one thing really well. But it, there is something about this goggle when used with each of those systems that is better, that's better than any other goggle out there. And that's pretty freaking impressive. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I want to make sure that everybody watching this video understands fully why this goggle is such a big freaking deal. Even people who are completely brand new to FPV. In fact, it's people who are just getting into FPV who are thinking about buying their first set of goggles who maybe are most interested in this question. Because once you've invested $200, $300, $500, $600 in a set of goggles, it's a little harder to justify spending the money on a different set. But if you're just starting from scratch, you've got no sunk costs and it's really important to make the right decision. So people who are already in FPV and who know some of this stuff already, bear with me, or there's a chapter markers in the timeline and down in the video description if you wanna to try to jump ahead to the next section, be my guest. So there are several different video systems in use today. We could start with analog video. This is a set of HDO2 goggles from Fat Shark. Next up, we've got DJI. This set of goggles is used with the Walk Snail video system. I don't know who makes up these names. Walk Snail, fine. This is, until today, the main way that people used the HD0 video system, HD0 being the manufacturer of these goggles. Now, this is a standalone video receiver. It's got some antennas here. It's got an HDMI output, and it would mount on the front of these goggles like so, in fact, just like so. I've got the mount still there. And an HDMI cable would come out and go into the HDMI input on the goggles and that's how you would display the image. This is the Walk Snail standalone video receiver and it mounts on the front of the goggles. These is just a set of analog goggles known as the Orca FPV-1. It mounts on the front of the goggles. It has an HDMI output and it goes into the goggle via an HDMI input. So that's where things stand today in the world that the HD Zero goggle comes into. And now you're ready to sort of understand why this goggle is so freaking versatile. In fact, let's rank these goggles from least versatile to most versatile in terms of the number of video systems that they're compatible with. Here's the DJI Goggles 2, the latest hottest goggle from DJI, and it is compatible with nothing. It's only compatible with the DJI O3 Air unit, and then just recently they added compatibility with the previous generation of FPV video transmitters. It can be used with the DJI Avada, that's fair. Tied for least versatile is the walk snail goggle here. This also cannot be used with literally anything except the walk snail system. There's no HDMI input, there's no analog input, there's no module bay. It's just usable with the walk snail system. Wait, walk snail finally did something equal to DJI. Equally bad. Here is the V2 goggle from DJI. It is slightly more versatile. Yes, it's compatible with the DJI digital video transmitters and it has an AV input. It's hidden right here that can be used to connect it to an analog receiver module. It's not a very good analog goggle. It has a little bit of additional latency and it's just not very, it's not very good at it, uh, but it can be used with an analog receiver module. So it is slightly more versatile than the goggles too. Next, we have these two analog goggles. And Although we call them analog goggles because they both have a module bay on the side where you install an analog video receiver module that receives the signals from your analog video transmitter. We call them analog modules, but they're really much more than that. They both have HDMI inputs, and that means that they can be used with digital systems. So here we've got one with the standalone HD0 video receiver on it and the other with the walk snail standalone video receiver on it. And more or less, if you use those digital systems, with these goggles, you are getting, you want to say you're getting the full performance of the system, but you're kind of not. And that starts to explain where the HD Zero goggle is so good. 
So when we look at the HD Zero goggle, at first it might be tempting to write it off as equally versatile to those two analog goggles. I mean, if you think about it, it has HD zero built in instead of analog. So it does, that's one thing that it does. There's an AV input, which takes a 3.5 millimeter plug and that can carry a video signal from an analog ground station. Or you can pop this little tab off the side and that opens up a port here that lets you plug in this little, uh, it's sold separately. And it's basically a modular analog receiver module. I have put my rapid fire module in here. I've taken it out of my analog goggles and as you can see, I've put the, the blue cover from my fat shark goggles on there. It doesn't look the best with the white goggles. I just don't have a white cover, but that gives you an idea of what you've got there. And the goggles have an HDMI input, so they can be used with the walk snail video receiver if you prefer. At this point, you might be tempted to conclude that these three goggles are basically equivalent. And if you were just looking at their versatility, then that might be true. But the HC Zero goggle has a lot of things going for it that these other two goggles just can't match. See, these HC Zero goggles have a high frame rate OLED display, 1920 by 1080 resolution, so plenty of resolution for any of the signals. There just aren't any wireless HD FPV protocols that go above 1080p, and most of them are running at 720p for speed and latency. And that means that these goggles can make the most of just about any system you feed them. When used with HD zero, they can take advantage of the new 540p 90 FPS mode, which gives the, the base resolution for HD zero is 720p at 60 frames per second. But if you want to give up a little bit of resolution, you go from 720 down to 540, you can get additional frame rate. You go from 60 to 90 frames per second, and that gives you a smoother video feed, but also a reduction in latency. That high frame rate display is also useful when used with the walk snail video transmitter. The walk snail video transmitter has both a 60 FPS and a 100 FPS mode. And again, you have lower latency in the 100 FPS mode, but any of the other goggles you would use this with are going to be limited to 60 FPS. But HD zero goggle can do the full 720p 100 frames per second mode. And it is one of the only goggles that can do that. I'm trying to think, I think there's maybe one more that somebody found an old goggle that somehow is able to do it. And the analog module is no exception. The HD zero goggle has advanced filtering for the analog signal and a proper deinterlacer uh, to make the analog signal look as good as possible. As well, the analog DVR is MP4 uh, encoding at, I think it's 35 megabits per second. So you're gonna get great looking analog, I mean, you can only make analog look so good compared to 720p digital, but it's gonna make your analog feed look as good as possible. There's another thing these goggles do that makes them the lowest latency FPV video link you can get, but I kind of feel bad that we've gotten this far into the video and I've been talking about them and we haven't even powered them up and looked at them. So let's do that and we'll come back to that lowest latency thing a little later in the video. To power the goggles up, I'm gonna be using this 2S battery pack. If you prefer to use a battery in your pocket, the goggles do come with an XT60 to barrel uh, cable. It's just a straight through cable. It doesn't have a regulator in it or anything like that. But that's okay, because the goggles can be powered with anywhere from a 2S to a 6S battery. And when I say that, some of the folks who've been reading the manual or been talking about the goggles online are gonna say, hold on, Bardwell, you gotta warn them that if you use a 6S battery, you're right at the top of the voltage range for the goggles, and it's a good idea to turn the power switch off, then plug the battery in, then turn the power switch on to avoid any voltage surges. Well, good news, uh, I'm told that Carl has been testing these goggles up to as high as 30 volts without frying them. Not suggesting you do that, but uh, they feel confident enough to say that it is safe to use these goggles with a 6S battery, even a fully charged one. Not a high volt, but a regular 6S battery is pretty much safe to use, straight from Ryan Quellett and Carl. The Scan Now menu is used to scan through the available HD0 channels to find any transmitters that are active on those channels and tune into them. So I'll go ahead and press this button and it'll begin scanning, and we should pick up a video transmitter that is active. I've got a quadcopter plugged in over on the bench. That's why you're hearing a fan right now, because the video transmitter would overheat since we're not flying. And here we have the signal from the video transmitter. You're gonna notice that it is a 4-3 aspect ratio, so it's not taking up the entire screen. 
HC Zero has some cameras which are widescreen, some which are 4.3, and some which can switch between them. The camera I'm using actually is the new 90 frame per second nano camera, which only does 4.3. If I wanna go back to the menu, I can long press this button, and we'll go back to that menu. The source menu lets us select from one of four video input sources that the goggles have. Those sources are the internal HD0 module, the HDMI input, the 3.5 millimeter AV input, or the expansion module, which currently is used only for analog video input, but there's some other stuff that they're working on, including a Wi-Fi module that might receive video via Wi-Fi. So, the HDMI input source can be used to display any, really, 720p or 1080p source on the goggle screens. And you could use your imagination for ways to use this. Two ways that come to mind include, well, first of all, if you've got a standalone video receiver, like the Caddx or Walksnail VRX, it's gonna output its signal via HDMI and that's how it's gonna get into the goggles. But you could plug this into your computer and just use it as an external display. Just like you plug a projector or a second monitor in, these goggles are just a 1080p display. So you could use it to play simulator. You could just have the simulator running in the goggles. You could, you could use it to freaking watch a movie if you wanted to. In addition to the HDMI input, the goggles have an HDMI output. And that is much more rare than I would think. It's like some manufacturers got the idea that you could only do one or the other and the user has to pick. You can't have them both. But HD0 gives you them both. HDMI output is good for putting whatever you are seeing on your screen out to an external screen. Nice for spectating if you're at an event or if people just want to watch you fly. You could project your feed. You could use it for shooting videos like this onto a little screen like this. Uh, you could record the HDMI output with an HDMI capture card. And ha -ha, it also outputs not just the digital feed, but it also outputs the analog feed. It converts analog from analog to HDMI. So if you have, it's really hard to get an analog feed onto like a television screen these days because a lot of TVs just don't have inputs for it. It can do the conversion for you. Pretty freaking cool. Now I had to know, if I am using the HDMI input with something like this Walksnail VRX, can I also then use the HDMI output to pass that signal through to an external screen? Uh, and there's only one way to find out. So we'll go here and we'll go to source, HDMI in detected, and... No. So um, you would still need an HDMI splitter in that case. I mean, they're like 15, 20 bucks. They're not that expensive, but it is. it's too bad they couldn't make that happen. It would have been real nice. The goggle has three sets of fans, a main defogging fan here on the top and two cooling fans on either side that help keep just all the electronics on the inside from overheating, especially if you're out somewhere where it's hot. The two side fans are automatically controlled by the goggles, so you can't change them. The top fan can be manually controlled from the goggles menu or can be set to auto, in which case the goggle will spin it up or down based on how hot it detects, I don't know, just based on whatever it decides. It's really nice that HC Zero have given this much thought to defogging. Uh, the DJI Goggles 2, DJI's new flagship goggle, says if the goggles fog up, I, I don't know, go inside. And I'm like, thanks. When I'm shooting a movie for Michael Bay, and not me, hypothetically. When I'm shooting a movie for Michael Bay, I'll tell Michael I can't shoot right now because my goggles are fogged up. Are you joking? So uh, it just shows how thoughtful HD Zero is being uh, to the general needs of FPV pilots. The record options are used to configure the built-in DVR. And this DVR is used to record the HD0 and the analog input, but not the HDMI input. I'm sure there's some copy protection reason why they won't record signals coming into the HDMI input. I don't really know for sure, but I don't think that's too big of a drawback because if you're using the HDMI input with something like this standalone Walksnail VRX, it's got its own built-in DVR and it's gonna be recording those signals directly from the video feed. Whereas if you were feeding them through HDMI into the HD0 goggles and it was recording them, it would have to re-encode them and you'd have some quality loss. So you can record HD0 or analog via the built-in DVR. The recording format can either be MP4 or 
TS format. The advantage of TS format is that if the goggle is unplugged in the middle of a recording, the recording will, it'll obviously stop recording, but you'll be able to use the video file right up to the moment that you unplug the goggle. If you're recording an MP4 file and you stop in the middle, the file will be corrupted and there are some tools out there, programs that can recover it, but sometimes it'll just be lost. The advantage of MP4 is that you can drop MP4 straight into your video editor and it'll handle it natively, whereas TS files usually can't be handled. I do have a video I put out a while back about converting TS files to MP4 losslessly. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. You can also configure whether the DVR records audio, and that audio source can be either mic, line-in, or AV-in. If you do decide to use the built-in mic in the goggles, you're going to get pretty crappy audio. That's what you're listening to right now. And the reason is that those defogging fans that we talked about earlier make a lot of freaking noise. It's plenty good for somebody like me who just wants the audio to make like a quick note to self or to help me synchronize my DVR with some other camera, for example. Uh, but if you actually wanted to record like good quality audio, you'd need to get an external lavalier mic or some other kind of microphone to plug into the port on the underside of the goggles. Now, if you don't like anything that you've seen in this review so far, the good news is that these goggles are completely open source. And so theoretically, at least, you could change it. The CAD files for the goggles shell have been published. You could download them. You could 3D print your own shell. You could modify it if you so desire. The operating system of the goggles, the actual code has been published. You could download that code. You could change the interface. You could add new features. And uh, in fact, the code that runs on the video transmitter is also open source and people are working on adding features to it as well. If you love open source development and open source community, whether you're a developer or just a user, this is Th that's something that no other system has. And even systems like WalkSnail, which are relatively responsive to community needs, you still kind of can't beat an open source system where developers can just do whatever the frick they want. The goggles have one, two, three, four antenna connectors. And you can see that I am using them with these TrueRC Xair antennas made specifically for the HD Zero goggles. That also gives us an opportunity to demonstrate another cool feature, which is these mounting rails on the top of the goggle. I'm not going to take the antenna completely off because I don't want to unscrew it right this minute, but we've got these slide-on mounting rails, and of course, we can mount these antennas, which are specifically designed for that. There is a mount for the Walksnail VRX, and you could just design whatever you want. It's basically just a 3D printed piece with some sticky tape on the front that you stick something to. This is really thoughtful. And these goggles have a lot of thoughtful touches like this because a lot of other goggles, the antennas are big, they're hanging off it. And when you go to put the, them in a case or in your backpack, you've got to take the antennas off. And number one, that's a little bit of hassle. And number two, it wears out the connectors. The connectors, SMA connectors only have so many mating cycles before they wear out. So the ability to just have these like this nice and contained, but not have them be built into the goggles. So if you wanted to use something else, you're screwed. It's a really, really nice compromise. Uh, you want to use it like this? Perfect. You want to use some great big honking high gain antennas that uh, big as dinner plates? You could do that too. It's really totally up to you. Earlier in the video, I told you that the HC Zero goggles do something special that makes them the lowest latency FPV system you could get, lower even than analog. And it's time for me to tell you what that is. Just as soon as I tell you about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is you. I don't take sponsors for my videos, almost never. Instead, I rely on people just like you to support me through Patreon.com. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you and you can stop anytime you feel like it. Uh, patrons get access to my Discord server where there are tons of helpful people. There's a troubleshooting forum. There's a buy, sell, trade forum. And mostly there's just a bunch of cool people to hang out with and talk FPV. But mostly what you get 
by being a patron, I hope, is the good feeling of supporting the work that I do here. If you get value from my content, if I help you save money, if I help you buy the right product, or if I just give you something nice to listen to for hours and hours while you're at work, I know you're out there, uh, then maybe today's the day where you decide it's time to join up. If today is the day, there's a link in the video description below to my patreon.com. I'd love to have you as a supporter. And if today's not the day, hey, that's cool. I listen to content for a long time before I go, fine, you got me, I'll join up. Keep watching the content, I'll keep making the content. Hopefully that day will come. In order to understand what these goggles do differently that makes them have such a low latency link, we gotta sort of talk generally about the pipeline from the camera, through the video transmitter, to the video receiver, to the display in a typical video system. But what the HD Zero goggles do differently is that they finally let HD Zero control the entire pipeline. Think about it. You've got a camera and it's sending data and then that data gets to the display. And if the display is in the middle of displaying another frame of data, it can't start displaying the frame of data that's coming in. It's like, hold on, you gotta wait. I gotta finish showing this one frame and now I'll show the next one. But by synchronizing the entire signal path from the camera to the display, HD Zero has been able to remove any of those additional latency so that everything is perfectly synced up, a line, a scan line of data comes from the camera, goes through the pipeline and comes out on the display without any additional waiting. And that brings the latency for this system down as low as 14 milliseconds glass to glass if used with a 90 frame per second camera or 16 milliseconds glass to glass when used with a 60 frame per second camera. That's, there are a few analog systems that get close to that, but not the 14. The, the fastest analog systems are at about 16 milliseconds glass to glass. 14 milliseconds is okay, it's only two milliseconds faster, what difference does it make? It's still pretty freaking cool. And only HD Zero does that. It's very challenging to design a goggle that's gonna fit everybody's face well, because people have different shapes and sizes of faces. HD Zero have done something that many FPV goggle manufacturers have started doing, not all of them though, and I'm kinda of wonder why, uh, which is ship the goggle with two different face plates. One with a more shallow, flat profile and one with a more curved profile. You can remove the face plate just by popping the little clips here. Just pop it off and it comes off. It doesn't come, mine didn't come with a face plate pre-installed. So what I did is I just took the face plates, I kind of held them up to my face. I see which one sort of felt like it matched the profile of my face better and popped it on. Then install the face foam here, which attaches via Velcro. And we can put this on and see how it fits. Now, it's a little bit silly to talk about fit in a review because, like I said, everyone's face is different. And I can tell you that this goggle fits my face just about perfectly. Um, there are no pressure points, like sometimes goggles will have a lot of pressure on the bridge of the nose. It's, it's completely comfortable on my face, and it's been a while since I've had a goggle that I could honestly say that. As far as light leak goes, these little holes here are the only place there's any leakage at all. And that's only if I move the goggles to a specific angle. Uh, some people have covered those holes up to try and prevent the light leak, but don't do that. They're air intakes for the defogging system. And if you cover them up, you may make the defogging system not work as well. The factory foam is pretty thin. And if the profile of the faceplate didn't fit my face so freaking perfectly, then I would have more complaints about it. Normally, I have to put relatively thick foam on my goggles because there's a pressure point somewhere that I'm trying to compensate for. I still feel like it's thinner than I might would like it. And over time, it's gonna wear out and get even thinner. Uh, but I don't have any serious complaints about it. It is nice that it is this neoprene style that is much more durable than like a fabric or felt or even, I think it's better than a leatherette style. 
Uh, it's my personal favorite, and I've been buying neoprene style face plates from my goggles aftermarket for a long freaking time. It's very nice that they've gone that direction. The field of view of the screens is 46 degrees, and if you're new to FPV goggles, field of view just refers to how big the screen looks when you look into the goggles. And that's a function of the screen size, the actual micro display itself, the bigger it gets, the wider the field of view, but it's also a function of the goggles optics. And this is something that a lot of FPV goggle manufacturers struggle with. Sometimes they have put a gigantic screen into the goggles, relatively speaking, and it results in this huge immersive field of view, but the actual lenses that shape the light going to your eyeball aren't good enough and you get sort of distorted images on the side, you can't center the image up, you, you don't get to see the whole thing clearly. This is something that people complain about even on a flagship goggle like the DJI goggles too. AC0 has taken great pains to make these uh, the whole optical system as clear and beautiful as possible. That 46 degree field of view is going to be edge to edge sharp. Well, I mean, everybody's face is different and everybody's eyes are different. So I can't promise you that it's going to be edge to edge sharp, but that was a design priority for HD zero. It's edge to edge sharp for me. And that's not true of every goggle. And the standard way of measuring field of view for an FPV goggle is to measure diagonally corner to corner across the screen. And that means that the way the field of view is measured depends on the aspect ratio of the screen. So for a 16.9 widescreen display, we would measure 46 degrees from here to here. But for a 4.3 display, like on a goggle, like the Fat Shark HDO2 or the Orca FPV1, we would measure from corner to corner here. So when you're looking at other goggles and they say, for example, the Orca FPV-1 has a 37 degree field of view, does that mean it's smaller than the field of view on these goggles? That depends on if you're flying with a 4.3 camera or a 16.9 camera. Because it turns out, the math works out perfectly that a 4.3 camera used on a 16.9 widescreen with a 46 degree field of view, the effective field of view of this smaller 4.3 image is exactly 37 degrees. So although the Orca FPV-1 only has a 37 degree field of view and this HD0 goggle has a 46 degree field of view, you will actually get the same size image if you're using a 4.3 camera on both of them. If you're using a 16.9 camera, the Orca image will letterbox and get even smaller than that. And so in that case, the HD0 image would be bigger. Like all FPV goggles, they have interpupillary distance adjustment, which moves the lenses in and out to try to make them fit to the width of your eyes. The range is 57 to 70 millimeters. And uh, somebody in the comments of another video asked, why do all the manufacturers have this 57 to 70 millimeter spec? My eyes are 72 and nothing works for me. And the answer is that they all buy the optics module from the same place. This is I'm pretty sure this is the exact same optics module in the Fat Shark Dominator and probably the same optics module in the DJI goggles too as well. I don't know for sure, but uh, they all just buy it from the same place. And so that's why they all have the same IPD adjustment. If that doesn't work for you, uh, you're going to have to get a box goggle. That's just the workaround. Uh, they also have focus adjustment from minus six to plus six diopters. Um, if your a vision is outside that range, or if you have a particularly large amount of astigmatism, where focus adjustment alone won't affect, won't uh, fix it for you, they do have slots where you could put a diopter lens in, a custom prescription lens. However, it is not the same shape of slot as the standard Fat Shark slot that most goggles have used until now. It is a new custom slot. So if you have a set of diopters, you won't be able to use them unless you grind them down somehow. Mm, uh, I am told that HD Zero is working with the manufacturer Optic Fisher out of Germany, who makes custom lens inserts to come up with a blank that fits their goggles. And um, you may be able to order that at some time in the future. Now, when I tell you the price of these goggles, you're gonna wince. They're $600, and $600 used to be kind of the ceiling for a really high-end set of goggles. Mm, the original DJI V2 goggles were $575 when they launched. I think the goggles, too, are around $600 now. 
Um, and considering what you're getting, maybe that's a fair price, but it's going to be a lot more than a lot of people want to pay. If you're watching this video before February 4th, 2023, they're running a special promotion where the goggles are marked down to $500 uh, and uh, so knock $100 off. But you should know that that is a pre-order and they won't ship till at least March of 2023. So you're going to be waiting a little while if you decide to take advantage of that. On the other hand, if you don't want to wait till March, you're what are you going to do? You're not going to get them any faster. There are none. So either buy them now and wait till March or buy them later and wait till June. It's up to you. Um, if you decide to get the analog module bay, that's another $30 and doesn't come with an analog module. You would use an existing analog module that you already own. If you don't have an analog module, the one that I suggest is TBS Fusion. The Immersion RC Rapid Fire that I'm using is very good, uh, but is a little more expensive than the Fusion and Fusion is performs really just as well and is a little cheaper. Um, uh, also need to note that these goggles don't come with antennas. Uh, so you can use any existing antennas that you have as long as they are right hand polarized and SMA. Or if you decide to get this exact set to get this low profile, you know, this kind of thing, then that's, uh, I think it's about 85 bucks. There's a link in the video description if you decide to pick it up. With that out of the way, I want to talk about who this goggle is for and who it is not for. And I've got notes. If you fly primarily analog, I think that is one of the weaker use cases for the HD Zero goggles. It does have some analog specific features that make it desirable, like the uh, proper deinterlacer and the great quality DVR, but lots of goggles have a pretty good DVR these days. I've got these Orca goggles right here, and the other goggle that comes to mind is the Skyzone Sky 04X, uh, which I don't have one of those handy, but uh, it is in a similar price point and a similar feature set. Uh, what these goggles have over the HD Zero goggles is a uh, much uh, lighter and more compact form factor. And that's especially true if you hang this freaking module off the side and now you got this freaking giant thing hanging off the side of your head with some antennas sticking up and it's not the end of the world, but it's not great. Compare that to something like the Orca goggles, where the module is on the inside. And if you only flew analog, I think you might choose something like the Orca, or if you prefer a larger field of view, more than a very, very clear field of view, something like the Skyzone Sky 04X. These guys come in, the Orcas just dropped down to 500 bucks. I think that's a permanent price drop, but I'm not sure. They're normally around 600. The Sky Zones are 569, so they're all in about the same price range as something like this. But if you fly analog and you're thinking about mixing and matching with something like HD Zero and or Walk Snail, then immediately the HD Zero goggles jump way, way out into the lead. So let's talk about the features when used with Walk Snail and HD Zero. Today, the HD Zero goggles are the only way to get the HD Zero 540p 90 mode, where you get 90 frames per second for the absolute lowest latency and smoothest signal. That is going to come to the video receiver eventually, but uh, it may not, it, th that remains to be seen. There will also be a 1080p 30 mode for higher resolution at the expense of latency, and that's every, this, everything's going to come to the goggles first, and then it'll come to the standalone receivers if and when it does, if and when it can. If you're serious about HD Zero, I don't think there's any question that you want to own these goggles, right? You might ask, well, could I just use a standalone video receiver with some other goggle, and yeah, you can, and yeah, people have, but you're not gonna get that ultra low latency 540p 90 frame per second mode, at least not today, that may come to the video receiver in the future, but these goggles can't do 90 frames per second, and that's the big limitation. Um, if there was some other goggle out there that could do 90 or 100 frames per second, then perhaps this video receiver would be a more compelling option, but today, for those who are serious about HD Zero and want to get the best performance out of the system, these goggles are it. Enough said. What about Walk Snail? I actually think that the HD Zero goggles with the Walk Snail video receiver are a better choice for most people than the standalone Dominator goggles. And the reason for that is because I just can't believe 
I just don't want to live in a world where I'm locked into one video system where I spend $600 on a set of Dominator goggles and they're good goggles, but then all I can fly is walk snail forever. Walk snail's fine. Lots of people probably fly walk snail and that's just all they fly. I remember when analog was all we had and analog was just all I flew and I was fine with it. But today, it just bugs me that those goggles don't have an HDMI input. Why not? Because walk snail doesn't want you to use anything else. You're going to use our goggles. And I say, no, no, I will get all the benefits of the walk snail system, including the 100 frame per second mode. And I will have a set of goggles that I can do whatever I want with. And it's going to cost me $200 for this module and five or $600 for these goggles. So I'm actually going to come out, I'm going to spend a lot more money than if I just bought the Dominator goggles. But at least I'll have the flexibility to do anything else I want. And when I fly somewhere and I've got like a walk snail quad and an analog quad, because maybe I got a little tiny whoop that has analog in it, I won't have to bring two sets of goggles. That's the thing. If all you ever fly is walk snail forever, ever, ever, Go buy the Dominator goggles. Enjoy. But if you're ever going to mix and match, suddenly this becomes really compelling. And it gives you everything. You're not giving up anything by using the HD0 with the VRX. You get all of the performance, all of the capabilities of the walk snail system. Just you got this little dungy donk that mounts on the front of your goggles and it's not quite as nice looking. In fact, it's a little bit hard to think of people for whom this isn't a really compelling choice. I guess the main person who wouldn't even think about getting this goggle would be a person who flies only DJI and just isn't interested in anything that isn't DJI. And like I said at the beginning of the video, they're sitting over there looking down on all of us and thinking they're better than us, so who really cares? Well, if you decide you're going to pick this goggle up, there are links in the video description. They are affiliate links. And what that means is that when you click that link and you make a purchase at the affiliated store, I get a little commission. Uh, it's not a big amount. It doesn't cost you anything. It just means the store gives me a cut of the sale instead of keeping it. So yeah, uh, and uh, it adds up. So it's a great way for you to support the channel. Head down there. You don't have to even buy the item that we're talking about in this video. You can just go click the affiliate link and do your normal shopping as a way of telling the store, hey, I support Bardwell and he sent me here. Link's down there. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. Actually, that's, that's silly. Uh, normally when I say I'd love to know your thoughts, it's because I want to know what you think. But in this case, I pretty much know what you think because I've been reading your comments in other people's videos. But if you still, if there's something you want to talk about, Head on down to the comments and let me know. I'll see you there. Happy flying.